Well, uh, with that, I think we have to shift focus to our next corporate conversation. So uh, let's just uh, talk about the next company in focus. And we're looking at uh, Coromandel. Now, the incessant rain in several parts of North India have resulted in both li loss of life and property. We actually have uh, Jayashree uh, Satagopan, President, Corporate uh, and CFO at Coromandel International, to just get a sense of uh, how this is playing out. Uh, thanks, ma'am, for joining in. Good morning. Let me first start by understanding whether you at Coromandel have seen, I, I really hope everyone's doing fine at, at work and at home. Uh, do tell us, in terms of business, has there been any disruption that you have noticed uh, given the rainfall in most parts of the country? Good morning. Uh, the rainfalls have just started and as you know, that there are certain parts of the country where we've got uh, excessive rainfall, certain parts where the rainfall is still uh, at a deficit. At this point in time, our operations have not been impacted uh, and our people are all safe. Okay, the operations have not been impacted. Uh, that's great to hear. And good to know that everyone is safe uh, in your office, I'm, I'm sure at your home uh, place as well. But just wanted to understand what's happening with the agrochemical space. Because, you know, the big headline is that globally a lot of agrochemical companies have issued profit warnings. There are talks of a lot of inventory issues. There are pri There's pricing pressure as well. Can you explain to us what exactly is happening? Uh, when you talk about pricing pressure, what do you mean? How much has it impacted your own business? And uh, how much do you think your own profitability could get hit? Well, uh, what we've been hearing and what we are been reading about the agrochemical industry per se is true. There are a lot of pressures globally. Having said that, uh, you would also recognize that we are in a silent period. And therefore, any questions that relates to specific segmental performance, uh, we may probably take it after our quarterly results. Okay. Ma'am, I, I just wanted to ask you again, you know, uh, it's great you told us that your operations have not been impacted, but I also wanted to get a sense, a broader sense on the business. Uh, because of this rainfall, I believe uh, sowing has been impacted in different parts of the country. Uh, so, would that not possibly affect the market, uh, you know, uh, the expectations in terms of demand, pricing? How should we read the sowing trends and therefore the impact on your business? See, the sowing trends in some parts have been impacted uh, because of excessive rains, but then the company has its presence across the multiple states. As I said initially, there have been parts where we have uh, deficit, there are parts where the rainfall is normal, and there are parts where we have seen excessive rainfalls. Our main markets are in the south, and uh, the rainfall has just begun and started with a good trend. So again, it's uh, early days because after a delayed start of monsoon, we are seeing some green shoots coming in. The acreages of main crops like paddy and cotton were lower. Paddy is picking up. So there are mixed signals that are coming in. But uh, more or less, when I look at it across the country and our key geographies, at this point in time, things seems to be pretty much okay. All right. Hi. Good morning, ma'am. You know, globally, many agro com companies, they've issued profit warnings. There have been talk of inventory issues, demand pricing as well. Uh, give us your sense on uh, India. And are we seeing higher dumping coming in from China? I think the situation in India has also been grim overall. Uh, we've seen that the price reductions have happened over the past, uh, I would say, couple of quarters. And the channel does, uh, the channel inventory also seems to be on a higher end. So those are the things that we are witnessing in the Indian uh, market person. Hmm. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about the raw material prices? Um, how much lower are the raw material prices and what has been the impact on product pricing? Um, how much, you know, what, what uh, do you think the way forward could look like in terms of raw material prices? The raw material prices are expected to be soft. Uh, that's the indication that we get from uh, the markets that we operate in. Mm. So, uh, can you give us some numbers when you say expected to be soft? How much could it be? How much could they fall further in the quarters to come? What could the impact be on your business? So, we clearly do not have an indication how further down it can go. Obviously, in China, the production capacities have been higher. Uh, they have started production and possibly there is a bit of dumping that is also happening. And uh, that has obviously resulted in the raw material prices coming down. Uh, what we understand from the um, 
sources with whom we interact that this trend is likely to continue and the raw material prices could remain soft uh, in terms of the next couple of quarters. What it could do to the prices, it also depends upon the ability of the companies uh, in terms of where they source from, at what prices they source from, which are the markets they are competing in, whether it's domestic, export, so on and so forth. So it is going to be company specific outcomes. And it is uh, overall from a country perspective, we will see that uh, lower raw material prices are there, but each company will have its own strategies in terms of addressing these situations. Fair enough, uh, Ms. Satagopan, but can you kind of just quantify that even roughly in terms of how much is the drop, say, over last year or sequentially uh, over the last quarter? And an average, I mean, 10%, 15%. So we just understand the raw material situation and to what extent uh, there is that cushion now available. So as I was mentioning earlier on, we are in a silent period. And anything which is specific to the company's uh, mm. uh, performance is, some, is something that we do not speak until the results are out. Okay, all I right. So we are. Absolutely, sure, sure. we appreciate absolutely. that, and we look forward to ch chatting with you post the results, and uh, you know then we'll yeah. get more numbers. But let's talk about a couple of other aspects. You have been investing in startups. The recent one being you've increased your stake in Daksha. What is the idea uh, with regard to this drone setup? And also, could you tell us uh, are you looking to take this stake to around a hundred percent more rational on this particular acquisition, this startup? Go ahead. Okay. As you would have noticed in the last year, year and a half, the company has been looking into the startup space, especially on the technology front and agri-technology. Last year, we had made three investments. One of them was in the drone startup, which was Daksha, where we initially started with a 10% stake. And uh, in April of this year, we had increased it to a, by another 8.5% or so. So at this point in time, as the company is maturing and it offers opportunities across various uh, applications, starting from agriculture, which is where Coromandel has a dominant presence. And then beyond, where you can look into defense, logistics, surveillance, uh, training. So we think that this technology foray will mark a significant opportunity and step for Coromandel to expand beyond its core operation. And even in agriculture, if one were to look into it, Drones are going to play a dominant role as we go along when it comes to applications in the fields. One, it is precision agriculture. Second, it is also going to help where labor availability and costs are going up. Okay. Similarly, there are opportunities in the logistics space, surveillance space. So, Daksha has been a early startup. So could, they have done very well for themselves. Sure. Could you give us some numbers uh, just to understand? I mean, it's great to see, right? Precision agriculture is the way forward and we're seeing a lot of companies invest there. So how much could your efficiency improve because of this? How much would costs go down? As you said, uh, you know, it will reduce labor costs, etc. Uh, any numbers that you can share with us and also any other such technology or new innovation that you plan to invest into in, say, the next 12 to 18 months? So as far as agriculture is concerned, a couple of years back, uh, Corimidal started working with another company in terms of piloting and seeing how it actually benefits the farmers. We had done extensive field trials and based on those outcomes, the overall productivity of the farmers went up by around 20 to 25%. So I'm not talking in terms of the companies, but in terms of the end users, which are the farmers. And this was done at a pilot scale. Today, the company has procured few drones and through a Grow More Drive program, we are driving it across the uh, APTG Karnataka regions with our Mana Grow More stores. So hopefully in the next five to six months time, as these drones are being deployed, we will be able to get much more results. But definitely there is a benefit for the farmers. As I said, the past results show us anywhere between 20 to 25% productivity gains overall for the farmers. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot, ma'am, for stopping by and giving us uh, all of those details. We look forward to having a chat with you. Post your results. We'll get more details. And in fact, we'll talk about some numbers as well. For the time being, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get chatting with Kamal Sarda, the Director and CEO at IFGL Refractories, to discuss their expansion plans. Stay with us.